Welcome back to my channel. So of course, I have a story for you. I wanted to share with you what I went through last weekend while I was setting up my event, okay? But before I get into that, I just wanna say, if you haven't watched my last setup video, you may wanna watch that first before you watch this because I'm gonna be referring to a lot of stuff that happened in that video, right? So I think it'll be easier to follow if you watch that first. So before I get into what happened last weekend, I wanna give you a little bit of background on my client. So my client reached out to me like in April, the early, early springtime, and she said that she wanted to do a 20th wedding anniversary party, right? So of course, I was like, yeah, that sounds fun. And she told me that she didn't want any flowers. She was like, I don't want it to look like a wedding. She said that her and her husband met at the club. So she wanted to recreate a club-like environment. She said, I want people to have a good time. I want them to dance. I just want them, she said she wanted it to be very festive, right? So of course she wanted balloon backdrops. And she was like, can you do that? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Of course, I can create some balloon backdrops for you. So anyways, I met her at the event venue. We started going through the colors that she wanted and the decorations that she was interested in. We started coming up with a floor plan, figuring out where the tables were gonna go, right? So we're really just getting to know each other and trying to figure out the decorations for the event. Now, while we were talking, she mentioned that she had worked with another event planner before me, and the event planner was supposed to help with the planning and the decorations. But I guess it just was a little bit too much for her, right? So the event planner had agreed to do, you know, a lot of decorations, and my client was saying that she didn't necessarily have the best experience with that because I think the event planner may have just bitten off more than she can chew, right? We all do that. And so unfortunately, she wasn't able to set up the decorations on time and the decorations didn't come out exactly the way that my client had envisioned. So for this event, for her 20th wedding anniversary, she wanted to have an event planner and an event designer. And so that's why she was hiring me, okay? So she made it very, very clear that she wanted the decoration set up on time, right? That's why she was hiring me. She didn't wanna to put too much on her event planner. She said she wanted the decoration set up on time and she wanted them set up you know, according to her vision. She wanted them to come out really, really nice for her guests, right? And also, I mean, this is a big milestone for her and her husband. She's hiring you know, a photographer. She wants everything to be really nice. So I think she learned from her past experience, right? Not to have one person do everything. And she was pretty much just voicing her concerns with me. Also, the location where she was having her event, there was so much traffic. Like there was a lot of traffic to get in there and to get out of there, especially on a weekend. So that was another thing that she was saying to me. Like, I need to know that you're gonna be here on time, right? So of course, I'm like, don't worry, right? I got you, I'm here for you. Everything is gonna come out nice and everything is gonna be set up on time, right? I'm like, you don't have to worry about that with me. So that was the reason why I started looking for people to help me. That's the reason why I started expanding and hiring a team because I only had two hours for setup for this event and what we agreed to, I'm like, okay, that's definitely not enough setup time for me to do this by myself, okay? Because I had agreed to do a balloon backdrop and then I agreed to do bigger balloon garlands behind the DJ and the balloon garlands was gonna be 10 feet tall and then I also agreed to do entryway balloons and a neon sign. And I'm like, it's just no way. There's no way I'm gonna be able to set this up all by myself. All right, so now let's fast forward months later, right? I hired two assistants and I'm like, I am gonna be prepared for this event. 
So what I ended up doing was in addition to my two assistants, I also ended up asking another balloon artist, another event planner in this area to come and help out with the event. And I'm so grateful, so, 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 so grateful that she was available, okay? So now I have three people, right? In addition to me and my son, I'm like, yes, I have enough people to help me. So the week of the event, I'm like, I'm going to be as prepared as possible. I'm like, I'm going to do everything beforehand so that the setup can go really easy, right? So what I ended up doing to prep for this event, I steamed all of my curtains because like I said, the client wanted a balloon backdrop and she wanted draping. So I was like, I'm gonna steam all of my curtains. I am not waiting until I get to the event to steam. So I steamed all of my curtains. My son even helped me with steaming because as a matter of fact, I had two balloon backdrops, right? And I had a bunch of curtains and I'm like, there's no way that they can have wrinkles in them. So I ended up doing all of my steaming. Some of the curtains I ended up ironing, right? Because I was like, sometimes, you know, depending on the fabric, it's actually easier to iron rather than steaming. But I did all of that ahead of time. Then I blew up all of my balloons. I even had one of my assistants come over and she helped me to blow up. I had so many balloons, guys. There was balloons all over my house. I must have blown up like 500 balloons. Like it was crazy, if not more than that. So I blew up all of my balloons. Not only did I blow up my balloons, but then I also added all of my smaller balloons and I shaped them, right? I was like, I don't care. Like I need to make sure that this is perfect for my client. I need to make sure these balloons look good for my client. So I did all of this prep work, right? And then also what I did was, in addition to prepping my balloons and all of my backdrops, I was testing everything out. So my client wanted me to do a neon sign over the entryway and the venue was very particular. They did not want us attaching anything to the walls. So I'm like, how in the world am I gonna do this, right? So they said that I can use magnets. So I went on Amazon and I was purchasing magnets and I was testing it out in my house to see what magnets were strong enough to hold my neon sign, right? So I'm doing all of this prep work, testing things out. I had my assistant come over because in addition to those balloon backdrops that my client wanted, she also wanted centerpieces. And she wanted centerpieces that had like these glow lights in them, again, because she's trying to create this club-like environment. So she wants lights and balloons. So I even asked my assistant to come over to prep the centerpieces, right? I'm showing her, you know, this is how I want the centerpiece. This is how we're gonna do it. You know, we're prepping all the lights. You know, my assistant, she's getting all the vases ready. She's wiping everything down. Guys, I was like, everything has to be prepared. So on the day of the event, I went to go pick up my U-Haul. I didn't have any issues with that. I got the U-Haul back to my house. Me and my son, we had a little bit more prepping to do. And then I said, okay, it's time to load up and get out of here. So I backed the truck in front of my house, right? We loaded all the decorations up. We organized them all nicely, right? Everything was going great. Then we come back into the house, you know, and do a double check. And I'm like, time to get to the venue, right? I go to get in the U-Haul, put the key in the ignition and turn, nothing happens. All I hear is this clicking noise. It's like click, 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 click. And I'm like, no, 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 no. So I do it again, right? I'm like trying to start this U-Haul truck. And again, all I hear is clicking. So I'm like, this, this cannot be happening. I'm like, this cannot, this literally cannot be happening. So again, I'm trying to like turn the steering wheel. I'm like, maybe it just needs some time, right? Let me just give it some time. Same thing. 
The U-Haul is broke down in front of my house and would not start. So now I'm like freaking out because I'm like, no, this cannot be happening. And it especially cannot happen with this client. Everything has to be set up on time. And I can't have a bad experience with this client knowing what this client went through before, right? So I'm like, absolutely not. So I'm calling you haul I'm like, listen, this truck is broke down. I need you guys to bring me another truck. I'm right around the corner from the U-Hauls, right? They're like, we can't do that. We can't just bring you a truck. We can send out roadside assistance or you can come and get a new truck. And I'm like, I, I just can't believe this is happening. I cannot believe after all of this prep work, I cannot believe that I may miss this event because of a U-Haul, right? Like I was like freaking out. So long story short, I ended up having my neighbor take me around the corner to get another U-Haul truck. Then I brought the U-Haul back to my house. My neighbor helped me. So it was me, my son, and my neighbor. We took all the decorations out of the U-Haul that was broke down and then put it, well, I'm literally like throwing the stuff in the new U-Haul because I'm like, I have to get there and I have to get there like within a reasonable time so that I can set up. And I'm like freaking out because I left late and now I'm gonna run into a bunch of traffic because remember, like I said, you know, earlier in the video, the venue where my client was having her event, there's always traffic to get there. And the later that you leave on a Saturday, the worse the traffic is. So I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm completely freaking out. So thank goodness my neighbor, they helped me, you know, to load the new truck. But then I just had to get in the truck and leave. I left the broke down truck right in front of my house, right? Like, I'm like, I can't even deal with this right now. And I felt so bad because I didn't even know if my neighbors could get out of their parking spots, right? I literally just backed my truck in. I just backed that truck in because I was thinking that I was just loading and then I was gonna be leaving. I didn't know that the truck was gonna break down so I'm calling U-Haul on the way to my event and I'm like, you guys have to move this truck because I can't have my neighbors blocked in, right? You guys have to do something with this truck. I left the key with my neighbor and I'm like trying to text my neighbor. I'm trying to drive. I'm trying to get to the event. And I'm like, you know, here's all of the U-Haul information. I called U-Haul to give them my neighbor's information, right? And I'm just like, y'all have to handle this because I can't. My first and foremost priority is getting to my client. I have to set up her event, right? So now my assistant is like, where are you at? <laughs> you know, the balloon artist, the other event planner that I had hired to help me, she's like, hey, I'm here. And so I'm like calling them to tell them, hey, you know, this is what's going on. It's just like, I'm like, I just... I cannot believe that this is happening. I'm like, I can't believe that this is happening. And I was so frustrated, guys. I was so frustrated on the way there. I was telling my son, I'm like, I think I'm just gonna do YouTube. I think I'm just gonna become a full-time YouTuber. I'm like, because the fact that I worked so hard you know, and it wasn't just me. I mean, my team and my family members, you know, they helped me. My son helped me. But I'm like, the fact that there was so much hard work and so much planning that went into this event. And then in a second, right? In a second, the U-Haul breaks down and that ruins everything. It ruins everything. I'm like, it's just, it's hard for me to swallow. It's, it's really hard for me to swallow. So long story short, we ended up getting there and everything got set up on time. Thank goodness I spent so much time prepping. Thank goodness all of my balloons were done. Thank goodness, you know, all of the curtains were steamed because we were able, everybody was able to just do what they needed to do and get everything set up. Like, the balloon artist that came to help me, she knew what she was supposed to do. She already had her assignment. She was like, yep, I got this. You know, my assistants, they set up the centerpieces. They had that. Me and my son, we set up those balloon backdrops. 
and everything worked out. Everything worked out. My client, she was like, oh my gosh, you know, I just loved everything. Everything came out so nice. She thanked me multiple times. But guys, it like going through that experience, it really, it really, really, you know, it just really made me realize what I sign up for when I agree to decorate these milestone events for clients. It made me realize two things. So number one, when I agree, and this is just me, I can speak for me, I can't speak for everybody else. When I agree to do something, when I agree to decorate your event, I'm going to do whatever it takes to decorate your event, right? I'm going to do whatever it takes to decorate your event. I mean, as long as it's not illegal. <laughs> I'm not doing anything illegal for anybody because I'm not going to jail for anybody. Um, but aside from that, it really made me realize the commitment that I have to these clients because I literally just left that U-Haul right in front of my house. Like, I'm like, Lanyelle, you can't do that. Like, you can't just block people in, right? So, yeah, I'm pretty sure, you know, I may get a letter from my HOA. <laughs> you know, hopefully in that time, None of my neighbors needed to get out, but still, right? There could have been an emergency. There could have been anything. And here it is, you know, there's this broken down U-Haul in front of my house. So that was one. It really just made me realize the commitment that I'm making to these events. And then also what it made me realize is that it does not matter how much prep time, it doesn't matter what you do to prepare. It doesn't matter how much planning that you put into an event, if you cannot execute the decorations, if you can't execute the vision within that two hours of setup time, and let me tell you, I didn't even have a full two hours of setup time. I forgot to mention that my client ended up telling me that she wanted to see the decorations first. She wanted to see the decorations, her and her husband, before any of her guests. So she actually asked me to set up the decorations like she wanted them set up a half an hour early so that she can get in there before her guests, right? Take her pictures and see how everything was set up. So I really didn't even have an hour. I didn't even have two hours for this event. I really only had an hour and a half for setup time, right? And I had to do a lot. But thank goodness, on the day of the event, because it was a costume party, my client was in a costume and all of her guests were in costumes, I think the focus was on that when people were arriving. So I think my client was a little bit distracted by you know, taking pictures with her guests and their costumes. So we got a little bit of extra time, right, to set up. So... Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot when you're setting up events. It's a lot when you're agreeing to decorate a milestone event. It's a lot, you know, when you take on the responsibility of bringing a client's vision to life, right? And again, if you can't execute, if you can't execute within that small window of time that they give you, whether that's an hour, two hours, whatever it is, if you cannot execute during that setup time, all of your planning, all of your preparation, all of everything just goes down the window. And that's a lot of pressure. Like it's a lot of pressure. I guess that's what I realized going through, you know, this situation that was pretty much out of my control, right? How am I supposed to know that the U-Haul is going to break down, right? I don't provide maintenance to U-Hauls. I don't, you know, like, <laughs> how am I supposed to know, right, that the battery is going to go down and the U-Haul is not going to work? So, yeah, it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure with decorating events. It's a lot that comes with events. Um, 
So for me, you know, I'm just really trying to figure out how do I mitigate all of this, right? How do I mitigate a situation like that and prevent a situation like that from happening again? Like I can't control you haul you know, I can't control how they maintenance and if they maintenance their trucks. But it's like, what happens if my U-Haul breaks down? You know, what do I do? So that's it. That's what I went through last weekend on the way to my event. I survived and all the decorations came out beautiful as per the client, right? The client loved everything. So that's the thing. I just wanted to share that with you guys. If you have been through a similar experience, let me know in the comments, right? What do you do as an event designer to control the things that you can't control? <laughs> what do you do to mitigate the things that you can't control? How do you prepare yourself for all of the emergencies that always come up when it comes to events? All right. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you have any questions, please let me know and I'll see you in my next video.